Okay, I've now cleaned up a bit and we've got our 20 bricks over here and our nice clean base of the kiln ready to go, ready to have the bricks put onto it. I'll just change the camera angle again and you'll actually be able to see what we're talking about. So what we're going to do is take a bottom brick, which again doesn't have the massive cutout in the top, and we're just going to place it down even with the moissanite uh, bottom of the kiln, just on the end. So you'll have a tongue sticking out a little bit, but that's perfectly fine. And again, we're using our little square bit here just as a reference point to the front of the kiln, uh, but it can be literally anywhere that you start. We take our next brick and just slide it into place. The tongue and the groove go together and you've got two bricks in a row. And you'll notice that the bricks are exactly the same length as the uh, width of the bottom of the inside of the kiln. What a remarkable coincidence. We now take our next kiln brick, place it there. Next one will slide in place as well. And it goes there. And the next one slides in on the end. This is unfortunately where the majesty of kiln bricks that just go together amazingly ends because we've now got a lot hanging out the end here and this kiln brick is going to go into place there so I'll get a better angle of that. Okay so now you can see a little bit of what's going on we've got this brick that needs to be well this brick here this brick here needs to be cut off so it's equal with the end of that brick and then we're going to have to drill cut a little uh, groove in the side of this brick here just so that this tongue can go into it and lock in place a little bit better and mean you don't have a gap between the bricks like that because well that'd be not ideal so to work out where the cuts go is relatively easy again we take our chisel we run it along the edge of the brick here just down into that one drag it up along the edge and that gives us a score line while we're at it, we'll just take the chisel again and just running down the top tongue, just make a, a cut mark in that side and a cut mark in that side so that in this brick we now have a score line there. Hopefully it'll show up. And we've got two little cut marks in there, which again hopefully show up. Trust me, they're there. Uh, you'll be able to see them quite well when you're doing it yourself. Now we're just going to push that away. I'll just get these two bricks out of the way for a minute. And that means that you can see this brick, which is the one that we've just made the score line on, which is about there, and made the two little marks in the top there and there. If any luck you can see those two. But if you can't, they're definitely there, trust me on that. Next we just take a square. Uh, you can use a glass square as well. This is just the square that's the closest to hand. Line up the score and just make that score more even. Easier to see, deeper. And same again with the two tongue scores or the two tongue marks. Make them full scores so we now have three scores going down the brick and then again we're going to take our hacksaw try to make a nice vertical cut especially on the, the end score but if it doesn't work out amazingly that is okay again especially right at the start here on this face is the best part to have looking good because that'll make your kiln look good if you drift in so that you end up cutting on an angle down like that then it's not ideal but it's not the worst case scenario it's yeah there's nothing it's not don't keep it up don't let it keep you up at night okay so we just continue this score
attempting to go straight down the brick. And I reckon just so we all feel better about ourselves, if we put a square on it, I've drifted away slightly. So don't feel too bad when you drift away slightly as well, is all I'm saying. This part is a spare, a leftover. Now, just like the ends of those other bricks, we're just going to cut these down about five millimeters. I very much like to do at least three cuts for these ones. These ones I usually just make sure I break down towards the gap just in case this chips out. Um, it just looks better if it chips out into the bottom than it does as it chips out coming up. But again, these bricks really don't matter for the actual integrity of your kiln. Okay, so we've changed that brick so it now looks like that. We can put it back in place. Okay, we've got this brick in place now. We can slide this brick along and now that tongue, the groove wasn't quite deep enough. So you just run the bricks against each other once or twice, just vertically and it now locks into place. So as we can see, this uh, brick here is tongued into the brick next to it so it's going to be a, a nice strong join. Unfortunately we only get that on two corners, the other corners you get the opposite of that. but. It's not a big, not a big issue at the end of the day, remembering that these bricks are just to hold an element. Now we get the same on this one, when it's all squeezed together right. They line up like that. This one we just line up so that's flush all the way along there. Pop in our next one, and our last bottom brick going to go into here, and we've got the same problem we had last time, so we just want to make sure that all these bricks are nicely lined up, we'll just move that brick for a second just so we can have all these bricks in a nice tight line. And we're going to mark it again. So we just take our chisel, run it up the back of the other brick, which gives us our mark. Mark in the tongue. So we've got those marks. And same as last time, we have a score running down the brick and we have our two little marks on top. So now I'm just going to push that out of the way. And same as last time, let's line this up with the score. Make that score a bit deeper and consistent. Same with the tongue grooves. Now again, for the main, main score we were just cutting all the way through. One more off cut. And we make the 
scores for the groove. Chisel in hand's getting tired, hence cutting four grooves in this one just to make the chisel work easier. And as you can see that did make it significantly easier. We can now put that brick in place, work these two bricks together, and there we go, and that is a complete bottom row. Now there is only one little problem left, uh, which I'll demonstrate with these two pieces. When we have a brick facing that way and a brick facing this way and they come together, as you can see if you look down the element channel, you can't look down the element channel because there is a wall part of this element here, groove, element groove there, that is in the way. Let's see if I can show that off better. So there you can see down the groove, but if I slide them together, you lose a fair bit of that groove. So all we've got to do is just cut out of this one, just a little bit of that underside underneath the element channel, just to give the element somewhere to go. And we need to do that on four corners. And effectively the way you know which corner is this brick here, for example, ends openly. So it's not going to be this one going to be this one that comes in from the side. Now your element channel is about halfway down your tongue groove so you can just especially on this brick here just look at it give it a little mark and say that's the back of the element channel then you want to come down to the inside face here so we've got a mark there so we know it wants to come down to at least there so we put a mark there and then we want to come in on an angle so coming like that we've got our, our mark here which is where it ends and all we want to do is just slowly work the chisel down until it breaks through and then we just clean it up a little bit we get the debris out so now the brick looks like that. It's just got a little teardrop in it, which will enable the element to pass through that section. Now we do that four times. I'm going to change angles to try to let you see the next one of those just a bit better. Okay, so this time it's going to be this brick here, which you can just see. This is the brick that goes in next to it. As you can see, it's open on this end. The element can pass through. But when it gets to the next brick, that's going to be closed off. So let's just try it like this. Obviously the element channels line up together, but eh, this is really pushing it. You just can't see down. Hopefully, especially once you've got the bricks in the hand, you'll, you'll see the problem quite easily if it's not clear on the video. So again, it's about halfway down the tongue. So we just make a little mark there and it extends to about there. So we make a little mark there. Flip the brick over, try to work in frame. So we can see we've got one mark there. So I'm just going to come down to the bottom half, make a mark. We've got our other mark here. So I'm just going to follow that down, come to the bottom half, make another mark. This brick's breaking much easier than the last one. All we're doing is just making it so the element can make that bend. That brick just
has had a little bit in the element channel as well because you can see it's just slightly off centered but we've just fixed that up easily enough okay only two more to do of those and remember don't worry if there's dust and debris because we're going to take this apart and then put it all back together again okay the next brick that's going to happen is this one here so again we just mark it about halfway down the tongue and we mark it where the element channel finishes which is about halfway through the um, solid piece turn it over I'll turn it this way so as you can see we've got a, a mark there and a mark there so we just extend those down to this to the bottom half of the brick and we're just cutting out a, a chevron shaped piece and we get it out of the brick and then just turn the chisel around inside it for a second which then makes it look like that that one goes back in and we've got our last one over here again halfway down the gap and halfway down the solid piece gives us our two marks we transfer those down to the bottom half of the brick and it really doesn't matter if you go a bit too bigger a bit too big better than going a little bit too small and having trouble with the element later as you can see there's another one so now the element can pass entirely around the bottom half of the kiln which is perfect it's what we're after okay now we do have one little problem which we'll get to in the end but we're not quite done with the bottom row of element uh, bottom row of bricks okay we can however start on the top row so we take a top brick and what I like to do is make it so that the the bricks offset each other so as you can see this bottom brick here ends here so we're going to lay this top one so that it ends here so we don't have the gaps in the bricks running up next to each other the whole time uh, one however thing that we do have to take care of you'll notice this brick can slide on the brick underneath it the tongue is a little bit tight on this one but we'll make it work just by grinding it a little bit grind to fit so it'll be nice and secure later but it won't come past this edge here because there are well it's nice and easy to show that's the brick as it sits on the bottom this brick's going to sit on the top of it as it comes through it's going to run into the tongue so we just have to take the tongue out in that section just there and there so we put that brick in the bottom put this brick up next to it just to help mark out where we've got to get rid of tongue that's there there and there so we take our brick with the fresh tongue marks as you can see there's a mark a mark and a mark I'll just cut them so that it's easier to see well usually you would just knock it off with a chisel Okay, so now there's three nice, relatively easy to see cuts that we've got to do. We've got to cut off, knock off this bit, knock off the end bit, and ideally leave the bit in the middle. But if you do knock off the bit in the middle, it's not the end of the world. Nothing, again, nothing we're doing today, end of the world if it goes slightly wrong. These bricks are just for support. I know I've said that a lot. People do worry a lot. So there we go, now the brick looks like that. And then when we put it back in its corner, and we take this brick, the top brick, and slide it along. And now, nice and lovely, lovely, good English, nice and lovely, sits on top rinse and repeat 
So we take this one, and again it's a nice and tight fit. That's in place, that's in place. We come to this one on the end, and we've got the same problem, because it's stuck on the, on the tongue over here. So we're going to do the same thing again, and just knock that tongue off where we have to. So we just mark it on the end of the brick, mark it at the start of the tongue, mark it at the end of it, and we know that we're going to keep the bit in the middle, but get rid of the two outside edges. And again, I'll just make these cuts nice and easy to see. Okay, so we're keeping this bit, and we're going to get rid of this bit and this bit. Just like that. Just like that. I guess it helps if I show the camera. That one goes back into place. And now this new top brick can slide into place with all the other top bricks. Occasionally you just wiggle them against each other effectively and it will grind to fit the two bricks together. Now as you can see this is hanging off the edge. Um, we deal with that as you'd expect just with a chisel. We bring it up underneath the brick. So it chisels over here, running it up, pretending this is the bottom brick. We just run the chisel up against it and just mark across the bottom of the top brick. Run the chisel up against it and mark across the bottom of the top brick. Which gives us a nice score on the bottom of the brick. We can then just cut that off. Is that? Eh, it's pretty much in shot. So now that top brick slides into place and ends flush. So that's your first half of the top row of bricks. Sorry, first row of the top row of bricks. Now, just as we did before, we do have an offcut. You can use the offcut, um, but I've never, you're not going to run out of bricks if you don't use it. So again, we just slide that one up against this one. Do the same for the next one. And then we finally get one of our locking ones. Okay, so this brick won't go in for two reasons. Firstly is that there is the tongue of the bottom brick in the way. And secondly, there is the tongue of its uh, mated top brick next to it. So we deal with one problem at a time. We're just going to knock off this bit and this bit. And again, that's relatively easy. We bring the brick, we'll just move these bricks very slightly out of the way. There we go, we bring the brick to there. Now we're just going to mark the parts that need to be cut off. So there's a mark there, there's a mark there, and it's going to extend until the end of the top brick next to it. So if we pull that top brick out of the way, it's also just the width of this brick here. So we can mark that one there. So now we've just got to cut those bits. 
my handy dandy hacksaw. One cut there, one cut there, one cut there. Those are a bit average cuts, but it really doesn't matter. We break off that one. We break off this one. And then we can reassemble this a little bit. That one goes there. As if I'm going to slide across. It would now clear, except this tongue is in the way. So we're just going to lift that brick out again for a second and just run it this way just to make sure that's nice and clear and easily mated. And then we're going to put that in the position we want it, which is right up along the edge of that brick. Have this brick come down into place and effectively, hopefully you can see that. We've got this brick coming in to meet this brick, and obviously the, the tongue just needs to have somewhere to go. Mm, there you go, there's an angle. So we're just going to cut a line in this brick so that the tongue has a spot to sit. To do that, I'll just put it on the bench. I'll just put it on the bench in a place you can see. Line up the two bricks and just make a mark where the tongue needs to go. On both sides. Try not to move the brick. So now we have two marks. One, two. We're just going to draw the lines down and then knock out a little groove for that tongue to sit into. cuts which makes that come off nice and easy. So that brick is going to go up there. Let's do it in the order that makes sense. This brick is going to come along here, slide into place. This brick is going to slide down from the top. and snug into place. Okay, so it's hard to see from your angle. Um, I can make that easier to see from your angle. Now, I'm spinning stuff. This top row is just slightly too long. These end pieces are hanging off very slightly. So we're just going to trim this brick here purely because it's got, on this edge, all it has is a, um, a groove cut into it which doesn't go in with anything else. So we're just going to slide a couple of millimeters off so that everything locks into place rather nicely. So make sure these top ones are in place well. which they are. They're lining up quite nicely. And we'll just have a measure and say that's probably the best way to do it. Again, I'm sorry, it's really easy for me to see. 
we need to cut about five millimeters off which is about the depth of the uh, the the groove so instead of just cutting the whole thing at once I'm going to make a couple of little cuts and we'll we'll see how we go it's just a little bit better than trying to do it all at once gives me a chance to make a mistake multiple times up a little bit so you can see. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to cut what I think. is a conservative estimate. up here try to put it in and say no no dice it needs to be a little bit more off but a little bit more always better than a little bit too much absolutely terrible job but good news as I've said before that doesn't matter now it fits perfectly okay we're just gonna spin this again ah while we've got you here you can see there is a tongue here sticking out and we're just going to remove that as well. And there's one on the back side over here too. Just so you can see. There is the tongue there. And now it's gone. been jostled around a little bit but it doesn't matter because we just squeeze it back into place and when we're done and when we're happy we are just going to take everything apart give everything a vacuum and just rebuild it again nice and fresh so same as before top bricks made with top bricks And the grinder fit is absolutely one of the best parts about these bricks. You just rub them against each other and they will find their own home. They're, they really are easy to work. It's like Hebel, but maybe even a little bit easier. Um, so it's not difficult. Now again, we've got to cut out parts for this brick to come through just like that a little bit closer to me but trying to capture it on film is kind of the point of this 
as you can see it gives us a nice even edge and this one's going to slide up along it and we have the same problem as before so it gives us another opportunity to try to catch it on camera what I'm doing so we take the chisel run it up alongside the bottom of this brick here going to make a mark. Take the brick off and you can see the score line in the bottom of the brick. So now we just cut that. Try to move that over there. Now that one, that score walked a fair bit so I'm just going to, just so we get it reasonably accurate, just use the square just for a second. because we might as well be fancy, we'll use the square on this edge too. And that just gives us a reference mark across the top and down the side. us a nice fit and it did okay while we're over in this area we're just going to knock off this tongue as well like that. Now we can take our next brick and our last top brick has the same problem we had on the other side in that there is a tongue in the way so we are just going to make a mark just as soon as I can find my chisel. So on this brick you've got the tongue on the end. We're just going to slide the ch chisel down the tongue till it hits the brick in front of it. And then that's where our, our mark goes. And that's where we need to remove the tongue. I'll remove a space for the tongue. So this brick comes off again. Last time this brick comes off. No, it's not. And again, because I'm getting tired, I'm just doing four cuts down the brick. Now this brick starts to come down but it's too long because for this brick over here we just need to cut off the uh, extra bits again. So we put this brick in place and then we bring this brick along and we say we need to cut off effectively three quarters of the tongue but again we'll do it slowly because slow is better than quick. And just take off about half the tongue. No, nope, that was the full tongue. If 
I can make mistakes, you certainly can too. But fortunately, it was pretty close anyway. It's within a millimeter or two. And that, for our purposes, is perfect. Now, same problem as the bottom bricks. Uh, the element's not going to be able to make a complete circuit around these bricks because the wall is going to be in the way. Is going to be in the way in this corner, this corner, this corner, and this corner. So we're going to do it exactly the same way as we did it on the bottom row of bricks. We have a look, we find the element channel, we mark it, we mark where it ends. We bring the brick down somewhere where you can see me work on it. We've got a mark there and a mark there. So we come down to here. We do one cut like that. We do the other cut like that, just making a chevron. Knock it out. And run the chisel around to make a little two drop shape. So that's one. Same again. We take a look. We say, Ellen's about there. Ellen's about there. So we've got two marks. We come down, we say that the mark is about there and about there. So we put the chisel in place. Give it a whack in a, a V shape. And that gives us another little bendable bit for the element to come through. Same with this top one up here. We pull it out a little bit and we can see where the element is. We pop it into place and we say it's about there and about there. And we bring that down, we look at our marks, which are there and there. So we put the chisel down, a couple of taps, bring it back, a couple of taps. One last tap for good measure. And just run the chisel around in it for a second, which gives us another nice hole for an element. And same with this one over here. We say the element's going to run about there, and the element's going to run about there. So we've got our two marks one, two. We put the chisel in place there. Came off easy. We put the chisel in place there. Then we run the chisel just to grind it out a little bit. We empty it. And there we have our last element hole. So now that brick goes in place like that. So that is all of the brickwork done. Now we just need to take it apart again, clean everything and move on to our next step. Okay, we've changed camera angles because this one's going to be better for this particular period. Uh, now there is just no good way to vacuum on camera. I'm sorry, I've tried. It's, yeah, it never works. So you didn't get to see that, but it was pretty exciting. I vacuumed. Uh, Beck would think it's exciting anyway. So once we vacuumed, we then just place all the bricks back in place in their original positions. I like to just leave them pretty close to their positions just so I know where everything goes and you don't never have one of those moments of which brick went where. Now it's never going to be absolutely perfect. We're not going for absolutely perfect.
once you get it in position, you'll give it a final vacuum anyway. There we go, so that's where we left off. Now, we next need our fiber blanket, and remembering this is now our, our front, our element's going to run around inside of this. So, every now and again you have a little hole on the end, like this one here, and there's another one just over here, and we don't want heat to have an easy passage to the outside. So all we do to block that up, You take two gloves, way better than one glove. And we just tear off a little piece of the fibre blanket and we jam it in the hole. It's pretty complex. Uh, we're going to do it on the other side over here where you can't see it. And we're going to do it everywhere except for this very front corner over here. So this hole here stays open because that's where the element's going to go in through. But all the other holes you can see on the outside edges, just jam some fibre blanket in them. Now it doesn't have to be stuffed to capacity, and in fact you don't want to stuff it overly much, because then it will be difficult to get the element in around the wool. And we will give you plenty of fibre blanket to make sure it's nice and easy. Okay, so now that all those are done, our next step is to do a little bit more insulation. So we've got a couple of things to do. One is to lay these lengths of fibre paper down on top of the bricks. And they will be a little bit too long. So we need a new tool, which probably most of you will have, uh, just a pair of scissors, cut the paper to length. This, like everything else we've done, the measurement is not super critical. This is just to give us a little bit better of an air seal. But again, don't. Don't stay up at night worrying whether or not you made it perfect. Here just estimate in the middle of the gap and you'll notice that's floating on thin air which not perfect but we're going to fix it. Now got all of those on, and this piece, which I showed earlier, is one of the offcuts. And funnily enough, as it was an offcut, it will slide back into place. So all we're going to do is cut a few of these. It's always a problem when you clean up, everything's not in the space you need it. So you just put it in until it's in there, all the way, mark it, bring it down somewhere level. Give it a cut, pop it in. Now because there was a saw blade worth of in to get this out of the original brick. It will always be a little bit loose fitting so we just take a little bit of our excess and pop that in. We only need 
a bit more excess. And I'm going to make a mental note to include some more fibre. I'm going to cut some more fibre. Okay, now we have some extra notes for the kiln building course, which is always good when you do a, uh, a dry run. Helps find these little things out before you had to find it out. Lose my scissors. Being prepared is for the week. Okay, and we're going to do one of those in each corner. So we just place it, we mark it by eye, so we guess it by eye. Give it a mark. Give it a cut. Wrap it in paper. Slide it in place. Cut off the excess. So now that those two are in, we can put this piece down. And that kiln looks, again, not airtight, but much closer. So you can see it on this one over here as well. Just get that piece out of the way for a second. Slide that in place. It's going to need that much. You can take this and just mark it on the outside of the brick. Bring it back into your field of view. Take our piece. Give that a wrap. Squeeze that in place. Take our scissors. Trim the top. For this one I'm just going to stuff a little bit more excess in there. And probably another little bit as well. That one was just slightly looser. Not enough to worry, but we get one chance to make it as right as we can. So we might as well make it, make it as right as we can. Plenty of people making their kilns who never bothered with this step. It is purely for looks. Uh, it's not going to affect the insulation level of the kiln at all. But now they're all in place, looks pretty good. We can introduce some new parts. They are these, which is more calcium silicate board, 25 millimeter, and one of these goes down this edge, and one of them goes along the front. Sometimes an extra pair of hands is handy. One of them goes along this edge. And one of them goes across the back. These are the real powerhouses of the insulation of the kiln. Effectively these are doing 99% of the work. see how they 
all fit around the outside of the kiln, which looks tremendous if I do say so myself. They all come pre-cut to the right height and they are just less high than the height of the bricks. This is so that when we put the body on in just a moment actually, uh, it'll compress the bricks down nice and tight and also we still get a good seal on these because um, well they're made to fit. Okay I'm going to bring the body in. Okay so this is the part where it finally starts looking like a kiln. Uh, we've got the insulation layers on the outside. Hopefully all of them will stay present and accounted for. We take our metal kiln body which you'll definitely recognize from the unpacking. Slide it over the top. Really wish we had another set of hands. But it goes on. That's just encased almost all of your work so you completely can't see it. Uh, which is why again we don't recommend going completely over the top with all of the the work you do. Okay, so you will notice, you may notice, there's a very slight lip down here. Uh, and it's very hard to show unfortunately. Let's see if I can just pick up the kiln. So there is a very slight lip here where the bottom's there and the bottom of the edge is there. So we're going to apply some pressure to try to get that lip to disappear. What we're going to use is a clamp and some wood. Now it's not critical that this goes away. Um, you can just give it a very hard, like one person leans on it, drill it. Um, but it is better if you've got some nice large clamps to get it clamped up before we put the rivets in. Also if you don't have rivets to go in these holes, I mean you'll have the rivets, if you don't have a riveter to put them in, these can be just self-tapping screws as well. Okay, so because this is your nice shiny stainless steel top of your kiln, we don't want to put some clamps on it. So we're just going to grab a piece of wood, pop a clamp on that end, pop a clamp on this end. I'm going to zoom out slightly so you can see a little bit better. Nope, right, that's in. Okay, I won't zoom out. I will adjust the angle a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So all we want to do is just tighten down on the clamps. Not as if you're in an international clamping competition. I'm sure it exists. Just nice and snug. You'll hear all the bricks shift, move slightly, which is fine. Once it's clamped down nice and tight, you can then just drill the holes. You can do all four on the end at a time. And then if you're doing it with me, you can get to use the little fancy rivet gun. Which does make rivets a little bit easier to put in. And the hole stays lined up. Okay, so that is this end done. So now I'm going to loosen the clamps off, spin it around and do the other side. Okay, so the gap on this side has opened up a bit, but that's quite alright, we are about to close it. And again we've got the piece of wood on top to protect 
the body of the kiln. And we're going to do them up tight, but not ridiculously tight. Okay. Now, because I really should have brought a second battery down, but I didn't. Swap battery again, and we're going to drill these holes. Swap batteries. And again, if you don't have a riveter, these can just be self-tapping screws. Okay. So now we're going to undo these and we can run the element into the kiln.